International Criminal Police Organization, aka Interpol, is tasked with bringing to justice the worst criminals in the world. Today, we'll meet the most wanted Americans on that list. Number 10, Jason Derrick Brown. Alright guys, so as you can see, we're going to be watching Most Wanted Americans by Interpol 2021 edition by the Infographic Show. Alright, let's go around. Right. This should be a good one. Maybe you don't think that and you didn't even know it. Although he might have introduced himself as Derek Brown, or maybe Greg Johnson, or Harlan Johnson, or Greg Harlan Johnson. He might have even met him in a French-speaking nation, seeing as he's fluent in French. He's also said to be armed and extremely dangerous, so perhaps it's better you didn't meet him. His story is a strange one. For a while, he walked and circled around <laughs> France as one of those smartly dressed Mormon missionaries you seem to see in just about every country. On returning to the U.S., he opened a couple of businesses that he ran out of Utah. There he spent big and pretended to live the life of a wealthy person, although much of his cash came from scams. It seems he must have run out of cash in 2004. That's the year he was Definitely America. You're not seeing someone go out and buy a gun in the UK just because they run out of money. That year, he watched a young armored car guard Such an American thing. Calamaris, collect the deposits from the Phoenix AMC Theater. Is that a Cybertruck or something? Wait, what? Brown unloaded his gun Careful where the, the window was smashed. The gunman then grabbed $56,000 cash and made a getaway using a bicycle. Fingerprints from the bike pointed to Brown, who was charged with first degree murder. He worked away using a bike. But where is he? Well, that's what the FBI and Interpol have been trying to figure out. The FBI knew he drove around the U.S. for a while after he realized he was a wanted man. But then the agency said he became a ghost. Trouble is, he looks a bit like a scraggly-haired oh. surfer dude. And there are plenty of them about. So there have been umpteen false sightings of Brown. Even one of Sean Penn's body doubles was arrested when he was mistaken for Brown. Where they <laughs> look like is now is anyone's crazy. Guess. There are theories stating he could have changed his name. Pausing, sorry guys. That's just one of my worst fears to be arrested. And especially for it to not be my fault. I hate the idea of prison. Oh, it's horrible. So, alright, we'll get right back into it. And be somewhere in a small Mormon community, or he's currently living in Quebec, Canada, or possibly as far away as France or Thailand. That's why Interpol has him on its red notice list. The FBI is offering a $200,000 reward for the capture of Brown, but as we said, he's dangerous, so shouldn't be approached. So you'll see now some terrible people wanted by Interpol. He's probably just run to a different country, recently. They won't find him for a while, I don't think, unless he wants to retire at one point for free medical care or something. Or not exactly in hiding. Number nine, John Lytus. In 2016, this convicted sex offender was found guilty of aggravated assault and kidnapping in what was an astonishingly violent crime involving a homeless pregnant woman in Florida. He'd been arrested for similar offenses twice in the U.S. in 1986 and 2009 when the judge sentenced him this last time he said he's not going to hurt anybody ever again. That's crazy. In prison in the U.S., but the reason we told this story is this man is still wanted Ooh. in the Nicaragua, again for violent crimes. Just because you... Pausing. So Nick Hawker not know he's just in America? I think what's going to happen is they get a strike team together, make this movie. They break him out of jail just to put him in their jail. You can see it happening. It'd be a great movie ever will be called Break Out, Break Him. Get sentenced in one country doesn't mean you're off the hook in another, so your name stays on the list. Okay, now for an extremely dangerous man who's been on the run for a long, long time. Number eight, William Bradford Bishop Jr. In 1976, this former United States Foreign Service officer shot and killed his wife, mother, and three sons. Even though he's now in his 80s, if he's alive and kicking, he's still called a dangerous fugitive by the FBI and is actively being looked for by Interpol. What went wrong with this guy is a bit of a mystery. He was highly educated, gaining a degree at Yale University in his younger years. Pausing. Just for you guys, it's not like... Kissy brief, it is hard to get into Ivy schools, I think. He then started working for the U.S. Intelligence Services and later the U.S. State Department. He was useful, too, seeing as he's fluent in five languages, English, Italian, French, Serbo- So far, they seem quite tame for being in the top ten most wanted. He drew out a load of cash in the town of Maryland. He then bought a sledgehammer, a gas can, a shovel, and a pitchfork. Yep. He returned home and bludgeoned his wife to death. Oh. After that, he went looking for his oh, mother God. while she was walking the dog, and he did the same to her. He then went back home to kill his kids. The FBI says he was prone That's to crazy. and didn't sleep very well. It's also said he suffered from depression, and to ease that, he drank vast amounts of scotch. He also took psychiatric medications and expensive time at a mental institution prior to the murders. The That's question is, could he still be out there somewhere after all this time? The FBI thinks it's possible given he is intelligent and very savvy 
When it comes to outdoor survival, he has extensive camping and hiking experience in Africa and even flew planes there. Whoa. So he could have easily gone off the grid and survived. He could be in Africa, but with those language skills of his, he could be anywhere. If you think that story's messed up, listen to this one. It's like obviously a really bad crime, right? But does it seem a lovely thing a top ten miss would it would be? I wonder if we go low down they get really bad. Reapers like re like hacked like a military thing and then run away hacking and stuff. Although this one looks like he's gonna be really, really bad once I was getting to it. Number seven, Leo Frederick Burt. This is the only terrorist on the list, but we should say Interpol is currently looking for quite a few more. We should also point out right now that the majority of wanted people are on the list for sex offenses. Leo Fred Elevations this are quite good. Stands out. On August 24th, 1978, a bomb went off at the University of Wisconsin-Madison campus, and a professor was killed. Others were injured, too. It was soon discovered that the people behind this crime did it in protest of the university's military research during yeah. Vietnam. Many of you know that a lot of folks in the U.S. weren't happy about the war, and that's why at the time of the university bombing, you would have seen students walking about carrying protest signs oh. that read, U.S. out of Vietnam, smash army math. Four guys planted a bomb, with three of them eventually being arrested and serving time in prison. Bert was the one that got away. For 50 years, authorities have searched high and low for him, following leads that took them from Canada to Costa Rica. An FBI agent once said he's got to be worried every day that he's going to slip up and get caught. I don't get how they do this right. How do you have the guts to be running all the time? I'd be terrified. It would be, oh, I just couldn't do it. Sounds horrible. It's no way to live. His life was indeed wrecked after that crime. Once a young journalist with a bright future ahead of him and a close family, he'll be hiding well somewhere. Wherever he is, he's in his 70s and likely not as fast on his feet. The FBI will still give anyone one hundred fifty thousand dollars for information. Just for information. Oh. Now it's time to put a woman on the list. Let's get to number six. An outrageous crime. I think I've seen it before. Catherine Marie Kirkow. I know in person, obviously. But I'm not. Western Airlines Flight 701 set off from California on its way to Seattle. Aboard were Kathy Kirkow and her Army veteran boyfriend Roger Holder. Some time into the journey, Holder passed a flight attendant a note that read. Everyone except the captain will leave the cabin. There are four of us and two bombs. Do as you're told, and no shooting will take place. He then showed her a briefcase that had wires attached to it. The man was for $500,000 in ransom and the release of a political activist named Angela Davis. Kirk Allen Holder saw themselves as activists too, railing against racism in the USA and also the Vietnam yeah, pause War. Real quick. By all accounts, I'm not educated, so I don't know what the Vietnam War is, but I don't think this is, the, this is definitely not the right way to go about it. Things didn't go too well. It's just crazy that these people where they were arrested. They were clearly like messed up psychologically, do you know what I mean? has remained a mystery. She's still wanted on air piracy charges to this day. In twenty nineteen, the FBI oh, stated God. that this woman was armed and dangerous. If you meet her, she might be going yep. under the name of Odalie Pessy or Janice Ann Forte. But that beautiful face of hers will have changed a bit as she's now seventy five. Now that is a crazy charge to have. Number five. Lori John Trice. This man used to be the head swim coach at a Pennsylvania college, but he was discovered doing something that appalled his students, the college, and just about everyone else who heard about what he'd done. When swimming practice was over, Trites would take videos of teens and women getting changed in the dressing rooms. Some women saw the cameras hidden in towels while they were undressing, so they handed it over to the most respectable person in the vicinity, the man they could trust, Coach Trites. He then tried to delete the content, but cops soon knew it was him with oh, his camera. His horrible. crimes came as a huge shock to the community, given that he had a solid reputation after founding the Trident Aquatic Club in Lancaster County. He was also friendly with many of the people at the local golf club, who also admired him. This was a guy that had accreditation with pretty much every That's horrific. in the U.S., and he was also a perv. He was charged in 1998, God. a year after the videos had been taken, as well as the six counts of violence in Pennsylvania's cool by law he was charged with. He was also charged with tampering with evidence for deleting some of the content on the tapes. Sometimes later, he left all of his worldly belongings behind and headed to Trinidad. And that's where he might be now, possibly teaching swimming or golf. If you see him, he might be going under the name of Buddy. He's also hard to miss, given the fact that... Horrific. <sighs> Honestly. Just like... Oh, I can't believe that. These people need to be caught. A lot of them. All of them. He's six feet seven inches tall. While he didn't commit a violent crime, the FBI says he should be considered and dangerous. 
Who knows what a person will do if they think the jig is up? The next guy on the list was a cop himself, so understandably he doesn't want to go to prison. Number four, Still Al Gherkin. In 2005, Gherkin was charged with the crime of stealing drugs from dealers on the streets while he was on the job as a police officer. No sooner than he was charged, he vanished. His last known address was in Hollywood, California, but his present address is a mystery. The FBI seems to think he... Got some... It's right there. Let's talk about streaming that. I can't believe that someone would actually do that. So risky to do it while on duty as well. Crazy. I don't get into it. Might be in Turkey for stealing heroin, cocaine, and marijuana with a couple of accomplices. He faces charges of drug conspiracy, possession with intent to deliver narcotics, and possession of a firearm while dealing narcotics. It was a simple setup the guys had. The accomplices would call up a dealer and say they wanted to buy a fairly wow. large amount of drugs. When the exchange was about to happen, guess who would turn up and do a traffic stop? Gherkin. They all then sold the drugs and shared the spoils. As you'll see now, just as in that case, a lot of regular street crimes make their way onto Interpol's list. Number three, Jason Liu. Like That's a big sell. The they must be ready to work. Sometimes fatal mistake of thinking it'd be a good idea to join a street gang and make mortal enemies of other gangs. That got serious on September 13, 2000, in Fullerton, California, when he and some other guys in his gang decided to go head to head with a rival gang. This was over an argument that had taken place between two rival gang members in a bar. Lou and his buddies were driving when they spotted the other gang. It was reportedly Lou who then shouted the words "blast them," and that happened, and it ended with one man dead and three others injured. Lou's buddies got some serious time in prison after that, but he's still on the run. It's thought that he might be in South Korea. That's crazy. Now back to someone who made it onto the FBI's top 10 most wanted people in America. Number two, Robert William Fisher. This guy once belonged to the United he States. He must have had a plan to become a Navy oh. SEAL, but after failing, he made his way in life with some decent jobs, such as stints as a firefighter and respiratory therapist. Fisher had a problem, though, and that was controlling his attitude toward his wife and children. Yeah. He gave his son a hard time because he didn't like to hunt or fish as he did. A church-going man, from the outside, things looked fine. But to people that knew him, he was a mess. Oh, Psychologists later said that childhood trauma over his parents' divorce and the fact that his wife was going to divorce him sent him over the edge. A long way over he went, too. In 2001, he killed his wife and two children and blew up his That's house crazy. and then vanished. Since he was a skilled outdoorsman, I'm shocked that the army, or, you know, I mean, the, the American, forgot what they said he was, but shocked they did not discover that, it's just crazy. Let's get a bit more, let's go back into it and see what else he's done. But even though police received hundreds upon hundreds of tip-offs, Fisher either remained out in the wilderness or started a new life somewhere. Given his survival skills, he could be in a remote part of the U.S. or Canada. But even with those skills, it would be a long shot if he were still living without... Wow. Wait, I'm going to pause real quick. So I wonder if the FBI is worse one with this. Is, like, hard, like, worse than intervals. I'll have to watch a video about the FBI one day. To his name in the back of beyond. I'll put it on the list. FBI's website, it states that if he is still alive, he will no doubt be heavily armed. So approaching him would not be something that anyone should do. This last man wanted Whoa, has to be the oldest crazy. guy ever to make the list. So even if he's caught, we doubt he'll serve much of his 280-year sentence. Number one, Prakashanand Saraswati. This man offered people spiritual enlightenment, and as so often can be the case with powerful gurus who take people under their godlike wings, they exploit people's trust and do something Ooh. terrible. In the 60s and Alright, guys, we're getting into the last one, let's pause real quick. Okay, this is going to be crazy, we're getting into the final one. This one should be interesting. Alright, let's get right into it. He started the Society of Divine Love in India in 1975. He wrote books including the philosophy of divine love and opened centers to teach such love around the world. One of the centers oh, no. became the largest Hindu temple in the USA, complete yeah. with an ashram on a huge plot of land. And that's still there, but it's distanced itself from its founder. Sorry, I'm not talking much. I'm really listening right now. Of some of the younger female members who stayed there. They came forward when they were adults. Sorry, I'm not talking too much. I'm just trying to really, <laughs> really bold. It's really good. Except he didn't spend one day okay, guys, because it. he didn't even show up for his trial. This was back in 2011, when he was 82 years old. This man said to be able to live in a state of conscious ecstasy, a man that can reach higher planes than the rest of us, was also capable of magically gliding through the hands of law enforcement. He might have had some people believe he could elevate them above their day-to-day -day state of consciousness, 
but when push came to shove, he was also able to make very down-to-earth plans with his followers to sneak into Mexico and somehow get over to India. He's one of the few people on the list that the FBI doesn't say is armed and dangerous. And at 92, it's a miracle he's still on the loose. According to U.S. authorities, oh. the reason the fondling guru is able to remain on the run oh. is his dedicated devotees. The U.S. Yeah. Marshal's office said, there are people that we've talked to who are devoted followers of his, and they will sacrifice criminal charges and prosecution to help his flight. Now, listen to this unsolved mystery, brutal true story of what they didn't tell you about the Burger Chef massacre, or have a look at hotel where people keep dying. Okay, guys, that's the end of the video. Go subscribe to hit the infographic show. This video was just very insane. I hope my reaction was good. Go watch the